All right, we're going to start with uh, Madame Sophie Gregoire Trudeau. We know that you have been working, uh, you know, active in terms of helping women for quite some time. Yes. Georgia, this is probably your first time on the Hill. You've been at Parliament Hill, part of uh, Day of the Girl. What was it like? I think it was an amazing experience and I'm so grateful that the ministers and Planet Canada gave me the opportunity to be a part of it and it was just so fascinating to see the day-to-day -day ongoings of the minister. I was paired with Minister Chagger who is the leader of the House of Commons mm -hmm. and her day is just absolutely hectic and she has to do all these amazing things like she runs question period prep and so I had the amazing experience of asking a question. And so when people saw that um, me, this teenager, who doesn't belong in the parliament room yet, and so I got to go and ask a question, and everybody was just so floored that a girl like me could go up there and ask. And the conversations that I had with Minister Hagger were amazing because she got to know my positions, I got to know hers, and we really talked about how our different lives have come into this area of politics. Uh, she's ready. I know, right? She's ready. <laughs> like, of course you should be in there at question period. You are completely ready to be a part of it. For you, Sophie, what makes, what draws you to this, to women, to girls, to helping in this way? Well, we've been talking a lot recently about the new notion of feminism. And for me, it's about one thing, being educated, knowing the facts that afflict women here in our country and everywhere on this planet. And the reality is that women are being denied their most basic rights and are being um, victims of violence all over this planet for one reason, because they are young and because they are female or because they are older and because they are female. It is unacceptable. And for me, it's really about knowing those facts and sharing them and trying to do something to change the situation. You have a daughter, I have a daughter. Yeah. You know, Georgia, someday you will have kids or you may not, that's your choice. But let's talk about the one thing women can do right now to lift up girls. What do we need to be doing? I think we just need to be empowering others and supporting each other in every single possible way. And one of my fellow girl ambassadors was paired with Minister Haidu, who's the Minister of the Status of Women. And she was talking about at an event called Because of Her last week in Ottawa, mm -hmm. about how we have to sponsor women and not just mentor women. So when you have the opportunity, you can place them in positions of power. And, and not just say, oh, you can get to this one day, but you can do it now, which is what the Gender Parity Cabinet has done, mm -hmm. which is an amazing initiative. And I think that as young people, we can do so much more and speak out about all the issues that need to be spoken about, especially with feminism and girls' rights. Nice. I think that, you know, this is all about sharing your story, being um, courageous enough and vulnerable enough to share your story, whatever your path of suffering or opportunity was or is, when you share your story, a ripple effect happens. And people always relate to other people when people are being truthful and speak from a place of integrity with an open heart and an open mind. It touches human beings. We thrive and we look for authentic relationships. It's what we need as human beings to evolve. So this conversation on gender equality is really about sharing our truths, sharing what's happening in our own lives and how we are suffering and how we can help each other through it all. And this conversa conversation on the topic of gender equality obviously is focused on women because the data shows that more women are suffering from in inequality on the planet. But this doesn't mean that men are not part of the equation, quite the opposite. The imbalance of the masculine and feminine um, scale worldwide has an effect on the potential of women in society, but also on the potential of men in our society. And they've got to be part of this discussion. And you know, with Plan Canada, that I've been an ambassador for them for, for quite a while now, we were having discussions last year saying we need to involve boys. They need to feel that they don't have to grow up in a culture where they are only, um, you know, their value is really about how they compete and, and their sexual behavior and, the, you know, and same for girls as well. We are m better creatures than, than what we see sometimes in the mainstream, you know, media and pop culture. And we've had these discussions with young girls a lot that they don't know where to belong in this culture. There's someone who feels very closely uh, like you do when it comes to girls and education and empowerment, and that's First Lady Michelle Obama. Yeah. So when you had a visit, she actually called you a soulmate. Yeah. You two just clicked. Yeah. I want to know what was that like? I mean, what are the Obamas like? Are they as cool as they seem? You know, when I connect with human beings, I'm an only child. So I think I was raised um, curious of the other. Uh, part of me is really like, hello, would you like to play? <laughs> right? So um, 
I think that in my more adult, mature relationships, I, I am still curious of other, of other human beings, and therefore when I connect with, a, with somebody else, and a new person that I meet, I'm always curious. So when I met you know, Michelle, it, I was curious about the work that she did, because we have so many values in common that we share, but also initiatives and organizations. Therefore, we kind of co-hosted an event together, together with her organization called Lean In when I was in, uh, in Washington, and it was amazing. And I think that she works from a place of integrity and she, her heart is really into what she does. And people feel that. And to be with the, those girls there that day was just amazing. Well, you talk about heart and I think we see that in everything you do and say and, you know, bringing the Georgias of the world and yes. putting them, <laughs> getting them to lean in and be a part of the conversation is amazing. But even outside of the activism, You've become really this global beacon for Canadian style. I mean, we see you everywhere in, you know, in outfits and you're really repping the Canadian designers. And I think that is more than just wearing Canadian clothing. That is carrying the Canadian culture globally. So was that, was, that, uh, was that intentional, that you were going to do this on the stage that you're on now? It kind of came naturally because we have so much talent in Canada, and I knew some designers, but I didn't know all designers. So I was kind of curious, again, and saying, let's do some more research. Let's see if I could encourage you know, local talent. And we discovered a, a world, a pool of talent that was just amazing. And I think that this whole message here today, even when it comes to designers, is about uniting, uniting Canadians to be able to be stronger together. I like that you mentioned vulnerability, and I think that that's very cool. I think that it's new for us to start thinking about vulnerability as an attribute that is actually useful as a leader, and I think it's amazing that you see that. Where do you think, Georgia, we need to be focused right now? I know we need to support each other. Do you see anything specific where that we need to be, a road that we need to be going down now to really lift up your generation and the generations to come? I think we need to be really mindful of the language we use. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, using words like feminism and talking about pervasive issues like sexual assault and sexual abuse mm -hmm. and rape culture, mm -hmm. because these are things like we were talking about today that are be beneath the surface, mm -hmm. and we can't just stay at the surface and talk about things mm -hmm. that may not affect everybody. And so we need to dig deeper and understand the issues so that we as a population and, and as a society can work towards making that better. Intelligent, bright, so articulate, smart. <laughs> so smart. 17 years old, when you look around uh, at your friends, are they doing what you're doing right now? Are they activists? Are they involved or are they on Snapchat or are they both? I think they're both. I they're think, both. Yeah, I, I think we live in a society where teenagers are much more able than a lot of us realize and so we're able to juggle a lot of things. Like I know I juggle a lot of different extra, extracurriculars and jobs and things like that. And so I think that teenagers can do a lot even if they do have Snapchat or they are activists and they can be both. Right. Do you find it hard to deflect some of the negativity that comes out of social media? <laughs> Absolutely. And keep yeah. that level like elevated? Yeah. And, and we were talking about this over the course of the day and how there are definitely some online comments and other things that can, may affect us. But like Sophie said, we need to look at the things that, that are self-serving and that make us happy. Mm -hmm. And we need to just not think, focus on the negative. Let's step away now um, from the activism for a second and let's just talk about life outside because we are women, we are girls, we are everything, we're doing a lot of things at the same time. Are there things that both of you like to do, Sophie, when you get a second, if you ever get a second, <laughs> away from the kids, no homework tonight, away from dinner, away from the husband, away from the duties. Away from the husband, that's all the, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know because you guys are doing your own thing, right? You've got a lot to do. Um, what do you like to do? What do you do for fun? What do you do to relax? Well, I'm a nature girl. So the minute I have a minute, I go outside. Nice. And I try to, you know, just, just reconnect and let go of what doesn't serve me. And this is really what we're talking about today, is that if something doesn't make you feel good, don't get close to it. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't make you feel good, Choose, some, choose somebody else. Mm -hmm. The people that we hang out with, the material that we consume in our lives, are very much representative of the people that we are. So we must choose our heroes wisely. We must choose the content that we expose ourselves to wisely. And the negative messages and the stereotypes, if they don't make us happy, well, let's raise our voices together and say it and not consume it. Because if it's not self-serving, then at the end of the day, it is not self-serving to society. Do you, uh, do you worry like I do about you know, the generation that's sort of being raised in the social media world? 
I worry about my kids. You know, I worry about how much they're going to place their importance and their self-worth on likes and, you know, viewers and subscribers and all of these things. How do you try and head that off? Well, I think two things. First of all, if you're a parent who's always on social media nonstop and you compare yourself throughout what people think of you, then obviously your kids will pick up on that. So we have to be careful as mentors, as friends, as parents on how we engage with social media as well. But I do think that the, lang the, the language that we hold, like within ourselves, how we, how we speak of ourselves, and we talked about that uh, a lot together, the inner conversation. How do you speak to yourself when nobody's watching? Are you peaceful? Are you kind to yourself? Are you constantly comparing and having self-hatred? Because it's, it's easy to have self-hatred when you grow up in a culture that tells you, be yourself, but look like this, and that person has plastic surgery and everything is non-human uh, anymore. How, where do we fit in? And the girls, you know, we, we, we talk and they tell us, we can't find who we want to become on that scale. And to have, you know, so many role models that sometimes aren't uh, authentic in so many ways is not, is not serving to the people who really want to bring change and be connected to their true nature. But I think that there's so many amazing, good people, young people out there who don't buy the message that if you do that, you'll be happy. If you look like this, you'll be happy. Why? Because we're suffering inside and it's not making us happy. So to be true to ourselves is quite a quest in life, uh, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. And we stand united in make sh making sure that uh, this happens. I don't remember feeling so self-possessed when I was 17. So I'm wondering what keeps you so grounded, Georgia? I think it's my hobbies and my passions in activism and in other parts of my life. For example, I've been singing since I was nine years old and I was in a choir for a very long time and I go to an art school. So I feel like my other passions balance my life out and I don't always focus on the negative parts of social media and I am not a person that is necessarily has to be on it all the time. So I think it's very good to have different parts of your life that can be counteracted. Thank you so much for Thank bringing you. it, but also bringing it in the realest way possible. I think that it's amazing when we can have someone um, that is in, in, in an office that is at the level that yours is at, that is still bringing that realness to the stage. And I think that that is so important. And I think that is very inherently Canadian about you. So congratulations Thank to you. you. I promise I'll continue. <laughs> Good, we love that. And, and you keep going because you will be my boss one day. <laughs> Whatever my job will be, she will be my boss. Thanks to both of you. Keep it going.